pearl dials, sapphire crystals, diamond bezels. For years, the idea of a Swiss-made watch brought a sense of elegance and class to the timepieces on our wrists. And India seems to have a growing fascination for Swiss luxury watches. Swiss brands like Omega, Rolex, Tag Heuer, Rado and Breguet make up close to 60% of India's luxury watch market. And the prices for each of these start from anywhere between 3 and 4 lakh rupees. Now, in an attempt to bridge the gap between luxury and affordable, we're seeing a new set of Swiss watches in the Indian luxury watch market. Savoy, for instance, is just a year old in the Indian market. It has a collection of high fashion Swiss watches priced between 40,000 rupees and a lakh 20,000 rupees. Brought to India by Silky Kothari Mehta under her House of Clocks and Watches banner, the brand wants to compete with the well-established players of the Swiss luxury watch market. Today, young modern leaders are those people who want to buy something that they can afford, something that they, uh, when they're spending money, their hard cash, they want value for money. It's if you see all the Rolexes and all, you're getting like the um, you know the fraction of gold, but at what price? You're paying an exorbitant price for it. When you're getting the same mother of pearl, when you're getting the same sapphire crystal, when you're getting the same diamond bezels. So uh, Savoy, I would say, is uh, you know very complementing to them, where you're getting the same quality, but at uh, at a much different price range. These watches have edgy designs. Take this icon light for ladies embellished with sapphire crystals and a royal gold plating and sells at just about 56,000 rupees. Or this midway chronograph for men, made from rotating stainless steel with a white aluminium ring, the straps made of rubber with perla white genuine crocodile leather insert. This one's priced at about 71,000 rupees. And these detachable inserts can be changed to match a mood or outfit. We took two years to develop the first watch, you know, that we did. So it's a different shape, it's a different, uh, the rubber bells that we are using, the clips that we are using. So everything has a Swiss quality. So it's a new concept, it's a new design, it's a new shape, it's a new functionality, everything. So basically our new collection that we are launching is a no hands. So you won't see hands in the watch, like you know, the dial is moving on its own. So that is a new collection that we are launching in October. Frederick Constant, another Swiss brand that has been dabbling with technology, aims to attract a younger audience. Recently, the brand unveiled its new horological smartwatch in India. An alligator strap, a folding clasp and the laser cut hands on the dial give the watch its sporty look, priced at approximately 70,000 rupees. You see that uh, people below 40 experimenting with newer colors and, and uh, sizes and materials, above 40 going for the classic uh, classic designs and classic looks. Yes, of course, the younger audience is something that we are looking for because uh, they are the independent ind individuals, you know, who will make their own decisions. Um, but I wouldn't say that there is only younger audience. We would say anyone, anyone who has a good eye for the product, whether he's a 40 and who's young at heart, so will wear our watch. For these brands, technology and innovative designs seem to play a part when it comes to reaching out to a younger consumer base. But the question is, will they be able to compete with the high-end Swiss watches that are dominating the aspirational buyer's mind? What we are seeing uh, you know, in the sort of global luxury watch industry, we're seeing a lot of uh, independent watchmakers that, are, that have been sort of coming up now. Right. We're doing very interesting work with respect to materials, with respect to uh, complications itself uh, or designs. They've been focusing on you know innovating with respect to displays, R&D that goes into it, you do, it's, it's pretty similar to making an automobile. We are very selective with our distributors and retailers. So if you see right now we are in Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Calcutta okay, and Delhi. We want to concentrate on a lot of point of sales but very selective point of sales. Even so, the competition is rife from the big guns of the watch business, like Bulgari, who unveiled a range of their high jewellery timepieces in Mumbai recently. And this for the first time since their re-entry to India in late 2014. Pascal Brandt, Bulgari's communication director, gives us insights to the brand's India strategy. 
Pascal, you've been in India. 2011 was an important year because, of course, you exited over here from India. It was also the year where LVMH had bought Bulgari as a brand. So, quite an important year. Now we're here in 2015. I'm seeing this kind of products that you brought into the Indian market. What's the thought process over here to cater to this market? So, first of all, I would say crafting watches in Switzerland is an explosive mix. Right. In terms of creativity, of course, sure. on one hand, in terms of added value contents given to some of the watches we present today in Mumbai. Uh, we are famous for jewelry and high jewelry pieces, but on the other hand, Bulgari uh, developed uh, strongly also uh, its watch business. Right. I take for example the Serpenti high jewelry. It's a good example of Bulgari handle since uh, decades, yes. uh, combining on one hand the best of the uh, goldsmithing craftsmanship with watchmaking, if I may say. This seems like the need of the hour as far as Indian women are concerned, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't take it away too much from their requirement for high-end jewelry. And then when you're mixing watches, replacing it with their requirement for jewellery, it seems to be a great composition and Bulgari seems to have that mix going for it. So we're seeing that in the kind of serpenti that you just showed or perhaps in this watch, which I'm quite fascinated by because of the kind of colour and I'm seeing this exotic parrot on it as well. The way Bulgari works is combining its jeweller's heritage with uh, our watchmaking expertise since we have the manufacturer in Switzerland. So we always go back to our roots, we would say DNA, to re-express, reinterpretate these roots, mm -hmm. these existing jewelry creation uh, in a contemporary way. Today, of course, looking at all of that, that um, and reverting back to Mumbai, India, on a global uh, uh, note that India has a very long uh, heritage in terms of, uh, let's say, taste for jewelry, mm -hmm. beauty. Right. Uh, so India understands quite well the added value uh, given to such products. What your strategy is for India right now to be able to cater to this market? What's the profile that you're reaching out to? So we enter in India progressively, step by step. In India, we bet clearly of, uh, on a common understanding and sharing about uh, the added value, about beauty, right. if I may say. Mm -hmm. Because as I said previously, there is a deep understanding in your country about uh, all the added value given to those products. Right. So for us, it's very natural to be here. Well, we wish you great luck for the future, Pascal. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks a lot.